Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is Dr. Angad Singh Gupta. Um, I'm an assistant professor with the Department of Management, Amrita Vishal with the Vitamin D Bangalore campus. I welcome you all on behalf of Swayam Prova in this course of basic microeconomics in our lecture number eight. Here we will discuss theory of cost, which again comes under the uh, theories of firm along with theories of production. Uh, to start with, I will uh, you know start first with the short run cost. Um, of production and then we will go to move to the um, long run production function. Um, so before we start our lecture, I wish that um, you all are doing well, keeping safe and healthy and um, you, wherever you are staying, that place is coming back to normalcy. Um, so there are basically two types of costs one is explicit cost another one is implicit cost so the explicit costs are those which are made to the factors which do not belong to the production unit i mean those who are outsiders but rendered services towards the production or the production process implicit costs are made towards those resources which the production unit, the firm owns. That means to the insiders. So the explicit costs are for the outsiders and the implicit costs are for the insiders. Otherwise, there are several cost components which generally we deal with to estimate an economic cost uh, for a particular uh, production unit or a particular production process. So, the first type of cost what we will discuss is total fixed cost what is total fixed cost a total fixed cost is the total cost which is paid towards the fixed input now which are the fixed inputs if you go back to your production classes there are two types of inputs basically fixed input and variable input which are fixed input the the quantity of input which remains same the quantity of input of fixed this kind of inputs the quantity remains same for whatever the production or the output is you know if in my uh, unit in my industry i require uh, one security guard if I produce 10 units, if I produce 20 units, if I do not produce at all zero units, then that one security guard will be my fixed input. The rent of the building, even if I produce 100 units, I produce zero units, I produce five units, the rent of the building I have to pay or the cost of, you know, uh, the infrastructure cost which I have to be of is the fixed input. Yes. So the total fixed cost remains constant with whatever the production is. And the graph is a horizontal curve, which is horizontal line, which is parallel to the x-axis. So over here you see on the y-axis we have cost given in rupees and the x-axis we have quantity. So whatever the quantity of output is, my total fixed cost remains same. If it is 10 rupees, it remains same at 10 rupees. If it is 100 rupees, it remains same at 100 rupees. Taking an example, we see that quantity of output remains, we can start with zero. We, with, even if we, I, have, do not, I do not have any production, my quantity of output is 10. And um, with one unit of production, my quantity of output is uh remains 10 and till the ninth unit of production my quantity of uh, sorry not quantity of output total fixed cost remains 10. therefore whatever my quantity of output is my total fixed cost is remaining same constant at 10. it is not varying it is fixed so the inputs for which i am making this cost making these payments 
rendered in this cost they are my fixed inputs and that is why with the quantity of output production it is or produced the total fixed cost does not change but the average fixed cost changes how for one unit my total fixed cost is 10 average fixed cost is you can see over, over here afc equals tfc by q so my average fixed cost remains constant that is total fixed cost divided by the quantity of output and hence my average fixed cost remains same as 10 divided 1 which is 10 and it continuously decreases till you know when i have five unit of output production my what is my afc again 10 divided by 5 2 my nine units is 10 divided by 9 1.11 but remember you can see the graph here it continuously decreases and it gets flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter but remember one thing it will not touch the x-axis why because as tfc is never zero tfc is never zero as long as it is it has a more than zero value this whatever the output is just take this example if i have 100 units of output 10 divided by 100 is 0 0.1 if i thousand if i produce thousand units 10 divided by thousand is 1 by 100 that is 0 0.01 still you know still it is more than zero it will touch the x-axis it will touch the x-axis only if it is zero so it is not going to touch x-axis right so an average fixed cost will be something so over here this means the amount of cost i am uh, bearing even if my output is zero the amount of average fixed cost and it continuously decreases and gets flatter and comes closer to the x-axis and gets flatter but never touches the x-axis all right the total variable cost is associated with the variable inputs whatever inputs that do vary over the period of time and with the quantity of output produced and how do i estimate the average variable cost it's simple again total divided by the quantity so total variable cost divided by the quantity will be my average variable cost per unit of output yes let us see now you can see my total variable cost sorry uh, my total variable cost curve is an you know inverse s shaped what does it mean inverse s shape this is my s right i can write s like this yes this is an ulta s opposite to this s shape this is s and this is a inverse s so a total variable cost will take an inverse s shape that means first it will increase but you can see the slope is decreasing it is like this increasing but the slope is decreasing that means the cost is increasing at a decreasing rate the cost is increasing but at a decreasing rate and then you can see after this point of inflection you know you can see a break over here after this point the total variable cost is increasing but increasing at an increasing rate exponentially increasing at a increasing rate so it is increasing faster over here so quantity of output is increasing but the variable cost at the first part in this part the total variable cost is not increasing it is increasing but not at a faster rate it is at a decreasing rate but at from this point to this point my total variable cost is increasing quantity is increasing total variable cost is increasing but it is increasing at a at this region you can see it is increasing faster than the quantity increase than the rate of quantity rising quantity or how it was behaving initially all right um, we can also look at this diagram over here so initially you know it is increasing at a decreasing rate say um, with the one unit i can see my total variable cost is 20 with with the two units total variable cost is 36 the three units 49 so how much it is increasing by first 16 units then 13 units then it increasing it is increasing by 15 units then suddenly 21 units so you can see initially it is increasing 
but it is increasing at a decreasing rate 16 and 13 yes and then it started increasing at an increasing rate 15 then 21 then 31 so on right but what happens with average variable cost with average variable cost again it is simple the total divided by the one this total over here 36 divided by 2 49 divided by 3 and we can see 20 18 16.33 16 17 so what we observe over here it is declining first and then increasing again it is declining and increasing so it will be a u-shaped curve right average variable cost just look at this number first it is increasing sorry decreasing 2018 16.60 16 and then it is increasing 17 19.60 25 31 it is increasing it's a u-shaped curve whereas total variable cost it is throughout increasing right this curve is it shows that it's a positive trend it is throughout increasing only change is that rate of increase so if you come here you can see the rate initially it is increasing but the rate is decreasing over here the rate is decreasing increasing 20 36 49 but 16 13 but after that it is increasing but the rate is also increasing 15 21 and so on therefore my total variable cost divided by the quantity will give me the average variable cost yes it is uh, determined by the price of those you know variable units inputs say x is my variable input so the price of my variable input multiplied by the quantity or the amount of that variable input that is my cost if i i uh, hire 100 laborers and each labor takes 20 rupees so my what will be my total variable cost 20 into 100 2000 rupees right so that is my tomorrow i may hire 25 laborers and then the price remaining same my total variable cost is 2500 rupees this is absolute not with in terms of the quantity now here we can bring the, the quantity here so the quantity is like say if you divide total variable cost with the quantity you get avc average variable cost Total variable cost can be uh, shown as the price of the variable input into the num number of variable inputs. And then you can see over here, Pxx divided by Q. I can separate this x by Q, multiply Px. And this x by Q is nothing but 1 by Q by x. This x goes over, so it becomes x by Q. So 1 by Q by x. Now what is Q by x? Q is the total quantity. X is the number of variable input. Therefore, total output divided by input, number of input. What is that? Average product or average productivity. So of that variable input, if it is X, right? So my average variable cost will be the price of this particular uh, variable input multiplied by the inverse, 1 by average productivity. So since average productivity shows an upward sloping first it is increasing then it is decreasing so i in uh, and you know inverted u shape like this yes now one by this means the curve becomes like this now one by average product which looks like this if this one by this means you are just turning it upside down and it becomes a u-shaped average variable cost right so naturally if you are dividing uh, 1 by 10 will be a smaller number 1 by 100 will be a further smaller number but 100 is larger than say so 10 100 10 right 10 100 above 10 but 1 by 10 is 0 0.1 1 by 100 is further less than 0 0.01, right? And 1 by 10 is 0 0.1. So now 10, 100, 10, it is like this. 1 by 10, 1 by 100, 1 by 10, it is like this. So this is the same thing you get here. Average product, um, sorry, average variable cost is an inverse of average product multiplied by the price of the product. And um, you can see that as average product, if you remember, gives me an inverted u-shaped curve your average variable cost will be a u-shaped curve 
and here you go yes now what will be the total cost total cost is nothing but the total variable cost plus total fixed cost what we will uh, tell you is that if you remember again i will take you to the total variable cost curve it start with the origin from the origin so if my input is zero variable input right so the difference between fixed cost and variable cost is even if my output is zero my fixed cost i need to pay so that is why it starts from here that is why it is it is never zero you know it is constant right even if my quantity of output is zero over here my variable fixed cost is still here right but variable cost variable inputs are required only when i am starting my production so when my production is zero my output is zero my total variable cost is also zero it starts increasing my output my total uh, the my variable input is recruited and my variable cost starts increasing remember it starts from this origin but total fixed cost is not origin it is starting from somewhere here right and that is why you can observe the total cost curve over here is starting from the point where my total fixed cost is so total cost is the summation of the if this is my total variable cost if this is my total variable cost so total variable cost plus total fixed cost which is here total fixed cost is over here parallel to its axis and add this gap for each and every total variable cost you will get this gap and that is my total fixed cost right i'll tell you again this is my total variable cost yes for each quantity of output i have a gap here between the total variable cost and total fixed cost starting from this output zero yes and this is nothing but the total fixed cost which remains similar throughout whatever the output is the gap between total variable cost and total fixed cost is like this yes and this gap for each quantity of production this gap is for whatever my quantity of production this gap remains same yes and the, the two curves are parallel to each other total variable cost and total fixed cost now like average variable cost my average total cost is also u shaped but it reaches its minimum after avc average variable cost reaches its minimum over here you can see average total costs minimum point is lesser i mean you know is um it's, it's being reached later as compared to the minimum point of average variable cost and this is my average fixed cost this gap is given by shown by this one yes the gap between why there is a larger gap between atc and avc because afc is this gap so this plus avc will get atc why so because total cost equals total fixed cost plus total variable cost total cost divided by q is total variable cost divided by q plus total fixed cost divided by q total cost divided by q is average total cost equals average variable cost total variable cost divided by q plus total fixed cost divided by q so avc plus afc so this atc is nothing but avc plus afc and here this difference atc minus avc atc minus avc is nothing but the avc and as afc continues atc minus avc is nothing but the afc average fixed cost and as average fixed cost continues to fall the two curves come closer to each other yes now i can show this to you diagrammatically um what is this this is nothing but the total fixed cost remaining same 
total variable cost is given by this 20, 36, 49, 64, 85. And my total cost will be summation of total fixed plus cost plus total variable cost. And you can see this is 30, 46, 59, 74, 95 and so on. Yes, my average total cost AC, average total cost is the total cost divided by the quantity. So 30 divided by 130, 46 divided by 223, 59 divided by 319.67, 74 divided by 418.5, 95 by 519 and so on. And what is marginal cost? I'll come here. Uh, after this, I'll come back to uh, this uh, slide again. So the marginal cost, again, go back to the marginal product, marginal utility, marginal cost is that additional, the change in cost. Wherever there will be marginal, there will be the change. Marginal product, if you remember, was the change in product with respect to change in quantity of output produced. Marginal utility is the change in utility or the change in satisfaction the consumer is deriving divided by or with respect to the change in consumption or the extra unit of consumption of a particular commodity. Marginal product is total change in output with one extra unit change in input or factor of production. Marginal cost is you have to connect to that. Why production is changing? Because of input. Why utility is changing? Because of consumption. Why cost is changing? Because of output. Therefore, how much my cons cost, total cost is changing with respect to one additional unit of output. Yes, therefore marginal cost is change in total cost divided by change in quantity of production. I come, go back, uh, so, um, going back to this, you can see this this one, C16, is nothing but the change in total cost, 46 minus 30, with respect to changing one extra unit of production, 2 minus 1. So this is 46 minus 30, change in total cost, divided by change in quantity of output, 2 minus 1. So with for one extra unit of output, how much cost and incurring and how much additional cost I'm incurring. So this is 16 and then again you can see 20, sorry, 36 and 49 or over here is the same thing because they are parallel, TVC and TC are parallel. So the marginal cost you calculate from TVC or you calculate from average uh, total cost, not average, total cost does not matter. So over here you, here you can see 46, 59, 13 divided by 3 minus 2. 1. 74 minus 59, 15 divided by 4 minus 3. 95 minus 74, 21. 95 minus 74, 21 divided by 5 minus 4. Again, I am at 5. Total cost is 95 to manufacture 5 unit of pins. And well, what is my, um, you know, if I you want to produce another extra unit of pin, another extra pin, what will be my cost? Total cost is 126. So if my output increases from five to six, that is change is one, my um, in the cost changes by 31 units, 126 minus 95. So my marginal cost is 31. So the change in cost with respect to change in one additional or when I'm producing or the producer is producing one additional input of, of one additional quantity of output so over here you can see initially it declined 16 13 and it starts increasing soon you know 16 13 15 21 13 and so on and faster right um, and you know uh, the same thing happens that marginal cost is change in total cost divided by the change in quantity and the uh, Total cost, if you remember, you know, is the change, uh, the price of X, that is the price of um, variable input, multiply the number of variable input. And I can PX, and PX is constant. So if you are taking a derivative, this PX comes out. So delta total cost is delta PXX. Now X is changing, unit of 
uh, input factors of production is changing but price is same uh, constant so price comes out so px into delta x by delta q and you can just you know make it upside down uh, without inverse so one by delta q by delta x now if you remember again marginal product i just said that how much quantity of output will change so the total change in quantity of output with one extra unit of production uh, extra unit of input sorry with one extra in unit of input so the change in total output with one extra unit of any particular input so that is nothing but the marginal product or product and hence one by mp if you remember again marginal product curve was like inverse marginal product curve was inverse u-shape first increases and you know declines very fast it intersects if you remember intersects on the uh, top of the you know highest point of the average product curve right and it goes down to the negative yes um and that is why our marginal product curve is an inversive shape and it gives at an inverse of marginal product curve will give me a opposite shape that is a u-shaped of marginal cost curve so we get a u-shaped marginal cost curve over here um let me take a simple example you know if you buy a new car or a new bike you have seen initially the mileage so the cost when you run the bike drive the car and all so you see the initially the mileage is very low and it it increases so you know the mileage increases with the kilometers you ride or drive the car or a bike and um so with the now your quantity of production is the kilometers you are riding or driving this your vehicle and um what happens initially as the you know mileage is low the cost of petrol or the fuel is high so whenever you were riding uh, your car for the first few kilometers your cost of fuel cost of production is increasing but at a decreasing rate because when you are achieving an optimal one a certain kilometers you know slowly it starts falling i mean the total cost won't fall because you are buying petrol right or diesel what falls is the rate at which it was increasing that means the engine is now uh, performing at an optimal level but after you have ran it for several thousand kilometers then the engine is old the uh, bike is old and it's you know the parts are old and then its mileage goes down and your cost starts increasing at an increasing rate so cost will always increase you need to buy petrol the maintenance and all but initially it is it is increasing at a decreasing rate gives you the best performance and then the cost starts increasing at an increasing rate so it happens with almost everything and uh, so if we are trying to connect all these curves together what we see that the average fixed cost is down here starting from here and goes closer to the x-axis that the quantity axis and the average total cost is just above the average variable cost and over here unlike total fixed cost and total sorry total variable cost and total cost which goes parallel to each other total variable cost and total fixed cost you see average because over there the difference is total fixed cost so there are total variable cost and total cost will be parallel to each other because the difference is total fixed cost and which is constant over here the atc and avc comes closer to each other because they are divided by q and that difference is total fixed cost divided by the q and that is average fixed cost which gets narrowed and narrowed and that difference the narrow narrowing down of this is reflected this this difference between atc and avc is reflected by this afc and another most important point you can notice here two important points i will say that average total costs minimum point is achieved at a later output at a larger output as compared to the minimum point at the average variable cost so the minimum point of atc will come later than the minimum point of avc and 
the most important point over here is marginal cost curve will intersect both the ATC and AVC or pass through both the ATC and AVC at their minimum point. So when you are drawing it, you have to remember that you are taking this marginal cost curve at the minimum points of ATC and AVC. ATC and AVC should come close to each other slowly. This is the difference between AFC. AFC goes down continuously and marginal cost curve will be like a J-shaped curve rather than a U-shaped. It will be like a J-shaped curve because it starts, you know, it falls initially, you know, and that's for a very for a short span of time and then it starts increasing and passes through the minimum points of this both ATC and AVC right um here we get the break even point the break even is nothing but where the i will just move my bottle over here the break even point is nothing but the uh, uh you know where the total revenue is equal to the total cost how do i estimate calculate total revenue total revenue is nothing but the product of you know price of the uh, of the product of the you know output of the product you are producing for one uh, unit of output and quantity is the total quantity of output of whatever you are producing be it pain be it mask be it sanitizer whatever it is so my total revenue is price into quantity that is my like say if i sell a mask i, I am you know stitching masks and for one mask i charge say 50 rupees and then i have produced um 10 masks my total revenue will be 10 into 550, 500 rupees. If I produce uh, 20 masks, masks, then my uh, revenue will be 20 into 50, 1000 rupees. And uh, you know, it goes so on, All right? So the total revenue is nothing but the price multiplied by the quantity of output. If the total revenue curve so now you remember this is my total cost curve this is the total fixed cost and over here is my total variable cost right down here so these are not required over here so the total uh, cost uh, starts from here um counting or estimating that uh, total fixed cost in here and then this is the inverse s shape and initially, if you see that the first few units of production, we always incur a loss. The total cost is uh, larger than total revenue. It expands initially, you know, the gap. That means the loss is expanding initially. And then the total revenue and total cost is similar to each other. Then the firm will break even. That we always say that what is my break even output? That means till what we know that initially we are making loss but till what level at, at which output level i will make up for my cost my total i may not gain i may not make any profit but my total revenue will equal to total cost from there onwards i can think of making profits again till certain units of output but initially my cost will be higher than the revenue i have to wait for that unit of production where my total revenue will meet my total cost and over there i do not make any profit as you see over here yes a zero economic profits so but where my profit is maximum you have to see that where my marginal revenue is equals to marginal cost that means my before going to marginal revenue and marginal cost i will say the slopes of the total revenue the slope which is nothing but the price over here the slope of the total revenue is equal to the slope of the total cost curve when these two uh, the tangent on total cost curve is parallel to the total revenue curve then that means the slopes are equal then i have the maximum profit so the difference between the total revenue and total cost over here is maximum that the vertical distance between total revenue and total cost so the difference between total revenue and total cost at this output the which is called profit maximizing output level will be same after that will be you know will be this one after that again the total revenue remaining same but the cost increases so the 
um, you know the profit level economic profit starts declining and at this point again we go back to a, a point at this point we go back to a point where total revenue is total cost and uh, after that we never make profit because the total cost rises so high and my total revenue cannot make that uh, match that and the cost is always higher so we basically do not go at this point ever you know? um, and beyond this point certainly so the total revenue and total cost uh, reaches minimum at the point where again total revenue curves you know the slope of the total revenue curve and the slope of the total cost curve are similar to each other so as over here we have seen you know in the previous diagram we have seen over here profit is maximum and over here we can see the loss is maximum as the slope between the uh, slope of total revenue and total cost are equal to each other but here we are making loss right but we have to pass through that before we reach break even yes we have to ignore this and continue right now i will take you to the long run cost of production now what is long run cost of production and the long run cost of production see first thing is that the you know the farm has enough time to make all the adjustments the farm has enough time to make all the adjustments in its farm size in its plant size it can increase the input of labor input capital input and whatever right so it shows the least per unit cost at which any output can be produced yes at a longer run list per unit cost list per unit cost at which any output can be produced at a longer run this long run atc curve average total cost curve is also known as planning curve because it helps us to understand what will be the output at the longer run and helps us to plan and budget for future as well right so that is why it is often known as the planning curve um just taking this uh, diagram i will try to uh, explain you that how uh, you know different short runs and the cost components at different short runs um, short run period um, will contribute to the uh, total long run average cost curve what we observe over here at a relatively low output level somewhere over here in the short run the firm might have this particular SRATC one curve short run average total cost one curve right the next one and another short run period over here we see that the with a higher output level we see we have moved to the lower cost curve because you know again initially the cost will you know uh, the cost will not fall but as it is again the you know over here you can see if this is a short run so initially the cost is falling and then increasing total cost right uh, sorry uh, uh, average cost right so it is first increasing and then decreasing but now we are in the second phase of the short run so we can produce a higher output now and that is why we see over here and as it's the second one we can produce a higher output with a comparatively lesser cost as compared to the first one the first one our output is low we are just starting so the our entire average cost schedule will be at a higher cost level yes in the uh, with the experience with the specialization with you know well, many other factors technology maybe generally don't consider though uh, quantity of output with higher quantity of output we see the short run average total cost for the next phase of production comes down slightly and it can come down further for srdtc3 that's still a higher output level and then we can see that it is going up and up and up so first it is declining and then it is going overall it is going not only just this point we don't know where we are producing yes so what we observe over here is you know what we observe over here is we are showing you five 
short run average total cost curves yes and we will try to connect it and then the you know it can pick the form can pick anyone which is appropriate for a certain production certain amount of production certain quantity of output whatever is appropriate they will choose this right um, so for this particular unit of uh, so, so for this one this amount of output they will naturally manufacture in with SRATC2 rather than over here because this is expensive they will make the changes and move to the next short run the same thing happens over here if I am here I will rather manufacture at SRATC3 as compared to SRATC2 which is a which is a higher cost schedule um, and we ignore these parts you know we will because these are inefficient ones which I am making like eggs these are inefficient no one will produce here they will rather produce here isn't it no one will produce no one for this particular output no one will produce at SRATC3 they will continue with SRATC2 right so these parts are irrelevant for us because these are not optimal decisions so I will just you know give them undoes to uh, completely um, eliminate them and this is a long run average cost curve now you can decide to connect all of them together yes there can be thousands of billions of curves you know average cost curve for a large quantity of output for a large period of time and then that curve looks very very smooth yes it looks very smooth now the average cost curves are there where if i am producing at this i will at this uh, quantity i will produce with a short run average total cost if i am producing over here i will produce with SRT 2 not over here with SRT c1 getting my point so this is how we get the uh, you know, uh, long run average cost curve in many industries the number of possible sizes virtually unlimited especially in the short uh, you know uh, small businesses well uh, small and medium scale micro scale enterprises you know uh, pity businesses we can see that they can um, vary the uh, farm size the capacity you know if not the capacity largely but within a period of time or they can vary it very frequently and within a period of time they can have uh, you know um, a larger I mean a variable um, varying uh, quantity of production and uh, so it is possible to have a smooth um, long run average cost curve and if you connect them together and find a tangency you know like this then ATC curve will be a smooth one so we are imagining that for each and every uh, every unit of output um, we have a short run average cost curve so for every unit of this every point on this long run average total cost there will be a short run curve uh, yes um, so this curve is known as envelope curve uh, because this 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 envelops envelop right envelop yes where you put this uh, the letters and all so this is nothing maybe this is called an envelope curve as well because this covers this all this short run cost curves like an envelope you know so that is why this is known as an envelope curve too yes now uh, you know the downward sloping section of the long run average total cost curve the downward sloping section of the long run average total cost curve reflects upon the economies of scale yes the cost is going down and the plant size is increasing the average total cost not the total cost the average total cost is going down so there are factors which lead to lower average cost of production these factors are basically labor specialization when you are you know, increasing the uh, your production capacity your output level with the labor specialization your uh, jobs can be subdivided um, workers can efficiently uh, produce their output based on their efficiency managerial specialization can come into picture that a, a person who is specialized in marketing they take care of marketing a person who is specialized specialized in human resource 
someone is specialized in finance. It's not that everyone is doing everything where there will be inefficiency, all right? Um, and finally, the technology uh, comes into play um, where, you know, when you are producing a larger quantity of production, your equipment will be advanced and you will try to bring uh, technological effic efficiency and that will naturally decrease the cost right however on the contrary the upward sloping section naturally you can see the uh, in the upward sloping section that when you produce after a certain um, output after here when you produce a certain output this average total cost so uh, continues increasing yes so this is known as these economies you know this is known as these economies of scale so as plant size increases there are factors which lead to higher average costs of production. Now, which are those factors? They are basically um, hierarchy. There will be, you know, uh, too many unnecessarily labor, unnecessary labor force, or they may, may not be in a larger setup. They are, you know, ownership towards the institution, towards the organization, towards the production will be uh, minimal. And there can be politics, there can be so many other things, bureaucracy and all, where the production will not, may not be, you know, beyond a certain point, of course. So every, every, it can be 1000 units, it can be 10 units, it can be one crore, you know, millions or billions of units. So you don't know, it varies from industry to industry, uh, uh, from farm to farm, farm, from its capacity to capacity. But Based on the capacity, I must identify that what will be my best output. Beyond that, if we want to push that output, you know, given a certain amount of capacity, it will just lead to inefficiency and too much of complications, which will increase the cost. And that is why it is these economies of scale, right? These economies, like which is not an efficient one, this choice is yours, right? Whether you will produce at this minimum point or you know, you will still continue producing your output, being over ambitious, and then um, you know, leading uh, towards your resulting in uh, these economies of scale. All right. So sometimes there is a segment where long run average total cost is constant. You know, like something like this, a little flatter on the minimum point. So that is known as constant return to scale, where the, even if the output increases for that period of you know output, the cost curve becomes so flat, flat down there that it is a constant return to scale, where you know the cost does not vary because the um, with the quantity of output, whatever you are increasing, and when you are employing more labor you know, they are probably manufacturing the same amount. That is why it is average cost, not the total cost. So that is flatter. So even if it is increasing, the cost is increasing with the output uh, of production, with the requ required input of production or recruitment of the factors of production. The cost is increasing, but it is increasing at the same level. So output, factors of inputs or factors of production, so outputs, inputs and their costs are all increasing the same rate so that is why it's a flat curve um, under the long run average total cost curve which is nothing but the constant return to scale all right so the formulae are uh, literally uh, literally similar so this is total cost divided by q you will get average total cost and uh, the marginal cost is this change in total cost in long run um, with the change in one unit extra output so it is as, as similar as the short run cost curve and um, and you can see over here is when my marginal cost is less than average total cost i am in an increasing return to scale um, and when my marginal cost curve is above the average total cost curve and um, then I am in the uh, then then the um, I am in the decreasing returns to scale part, and at this minimum uh, point we reach an efficiency. So this is the minimum efficient scale, and over here we can see a constant return to scale for some time if it sustains for some times. 
right? So uh, again, marginal cost curve when it is lesser than the average total cost curve. We are in increasing return to scale. It is economies of scale. When the marginal cost curve is above the average cost curve, this is dissolved, this is economies of scale, and we are in the decreasing return to scale. Um, and uh, you know, when we are trying to look at the optimal condition, um, our long run marginal cost curve and short run marginal cost curve should be equal at that point of. Uh, should be minimum at their minimum point over here the short run cost curve and the marginal uh, long run uh, average cost curve they are at the minimum and they are at the same point and the marginal long run marginal cost curve and also the short run marginal cost curve will pass through them from the you know through the very same point so the uh, long run marginal cost curve will pass like this short run marginal cost curve will pass like this and at this point short run av uh, average cost curve at its minimum and long run average cost curve is also at its minimum right so we have discussed about economies of scale and these economies of scale and here this is the last uh, point here is this economies or these economies of scope so when a firm produces more than one product, um, it may also experience an economies or these economies of scope. Now, what is this economies or these economies of scope? Is that um, economies of scope exist when a single firm producing multiple products jointly. Jointly, when a single firm produces a multiple products jointly then you know their uh, production process may be cheaper uh, because a firm which is producing to have you know three types of car together or a firm which is producing uh, sketch pins dot pins or dot pins gel pins together in the same unit uh, then it is naturally cheaper rather than having a separate unit for ball pin and a separate unit for ink pin or gel pin and a separate unit for sketch pen uh, that will be further more expensive so when they are producing together uh, you know in the same single unit then it is cheap um, and that is how they can get the economies of scope so if they cannot then that is the diseconomies of scope so um, we will come finish our lecture today over here this is the theory of cost and um, we are done with our lecture eight and um, so next day we will enter into the uh, market and um, types of market imperfect market perfectly competitive market and so on and so forth so uh, goodbye take care and um, hope to see you soon